Rebecca from Papa Tree de Schwa and welcome to Tag Along Tuesday. Now I am classifying these as tags because they have the tag shape at the top, they have a hole, and they have a tie. But what they are also is little envelopes. So um, I think I'm going to call these um, um, a uh, a tag pocket full of ephemera or something along that line. So um, I found the idea for this uh, and I thought it would be really cute with uh, music paper and book pages so I did uh, between uh, last night and this morning um, I did eight. Um, all the ephemera that's in here I already had um, cut out some of it. I already had inked uh, and what I didn't have I uh, tea stained this morning and uh, it, just the back of it and inked a little bit around the edges. Now I know some of these cards are just a little bit big but I like them so they're going in. So I'm just going to do a quick little run through. Each one of them is just this little simple envelope pocket uh, made from a tag uh, or uh, a tag made from an envelope you know just depends on how you want to look at it I suppose <clears throat> and then this is just some uh, little ephemera um, that I had cut out from a 6x6 um, that I picked up um, I think maybe Hobby Lobby like five, four or five years ago um, and in it, it had just a bunch of little, um, uh, just little cutouts, uh, and I still have a few, and if I'm not mistaken, it's a Prima, um, product, um, pretty sure that's, it's a Prima, so, um, I just, um, made a few little, uh, tags, uh, almost all of these come out of, if not that six by six, they all did come out of a six by six, with the exception of this one. This one was a um, a gift uh, when I was in a uh, a crafting group on Facebook like three years ago, and seems like there was another one, but I don't see it right now. But anyway, so there's that one. Then this just has two big um, kind of cards in it. These are both uh, French based with a little, just a little uh, note there. This one is sort of the same uh, with just this little bitty uh, journaling card there. And it's a little, um, I probably could put glue on the bottom, but I put it in as a, as a little belly band. So, oh, this is the other one. This one also came from the same person. Um, so this one um, just has some simple little uh, ephemera. Now the, this one and these two come from dictionary pages, whereas these and this little one came from, a, from music paper. Um, these two came from one... Uh, uh, music book and the other three came from another music book so here's these just little notes uh, or little uh, uh, note to self just little journaling spots and then the, I glued this little bitty stamp on two sides and then put this little bitty uh, note card type thing in it um, this one's got a little um, a little thing that you could put a little something on there. It has two little um, tickets that I made from um, a paper pad. 
I think this is also a Prima paper pad. The, uh, it's called the French Riviera, but I, and I'm pretty sure it's by Prima. Um, that I've had it a long time ago. Then there's this one, and then these two note cards. And then the last one, I had a small piece of paper left after I did one of these. And I had all these little pink things, so I thought, okay, I want to do all the pink ones together. So I put a little pink piece of um, um, uh, lace here, put the word beautiful. Each one of these, this is how they came. I just um, put a little tea stain uh, on the back. So this is just a little bitty one there. And then this one says, remember this, and so I just put that here, and that's also a little bitty belly band there. So, um, I've laid out some music paper, so I'm going to make two of these. Um, that gives me ten all together um, to, uh, to um, put in my stash or give away when the drawing is, or whichever it turns out to be. So um, let me get my um, all my materials together, and I will be back in just a minute. Okay, so I've got a couple of uh, music uh, paper sheets here, and I've already folded them in half. And so what I'm going to do is just do a quick glue, just basically right along the music part, um, just enough to hold it together, and then press it, and I had put, uh, this is um, just a, a, a placement that has cork on the back, and I had put it um, away when I was doing some cleaning a while back, and uh, had it under a stack of books and I like to work on it one because it protects my white surface underneath but also it's roughly the perfect size of what my camera is seeing so I know that as long as I stay on the mat I'm in shot <laughs> so it's pulling double duty okay so um, <clears throat> I've got a little bit of a cruddy voice tonight. I think when we were visiting the grandkids, we might have picked up a little something. I'm not real sure. Both my husband and I have been kind of sneezing and our head feeling full for a couple of days now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip... Because I like um, I like the look when I rip the other ones, so I'm just ripping um, two sides. Because what I'll be doing is folding one over like this, because you need a square. So what I'm doing is. That looks a little off to me, so let's fix it just a little bit. That looks a little better. And lay that to the side. And then, now it doesn't bother me that if that these have the little lines in them. I think it just helps give them a little character. But what I'm doing is just finding my middle here. So let's do this one. So, and I'm not measuring, I'm just making a square from what I have ripped. And it'll be whatever size that it is. And just make sure your little point, you make a a point here and I've got it off just a touch and a rip here and 
and there we go okay so now what I like to do because one's upside down and one's not but I want to make sure that um, I want kind of a, a pretty um, design on the part of the envelope that stays open that makes the tag shape and I kind of like this one but when I put a hole through it it's probably going to disappear um, but if I don't use it it's not going to show at all so I think that's going to be it. So these two will be my sides. So I'm just bringing them into that point. And since it's not, technically it's not an actual, like, perfect square, you might have to adjust it uh, with a few, you know, millimeters. And then just come up enough to give your, um, your little... Um, tag envelope a square bottom because you know we need square bottoms and now I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and that's a fib I'm a whole lot of a perfectionist in some things but I can see right here that this does not line up with this so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pull this forward by you know <laughs> that much and that much might make all the difference and then fold that back up and that does look a whole lot better and then the other thing that I'm going to do is just make a little mark here and here and fold that little bit of a triangle down so it will be flat right across that bottom. And I'm going to stick a little dot of glue on it. I think my glue is trying to dry up again. I was using it this morning but I haven't used it all day. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to still figure out what to do about putting the pen in it. Okay, so now the other thing I'm going to do before I go any further is here's the infamous uh, black ink that uh, has come unglued on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just edge these papers because this, the ink or the uh, all the notes and that sort of thing is in black. I'm doing it in black as opposed to the coffee ink. I just think it would look better. So I'm just going around and doing the edges in the black that you know will show so on the uh, part that stands up it will be the back end the front okay so now we're going to do that little side flap but only on the top we don't need to do the bottom because it will be covered up let me fold that back because now okay I forgot which one I was doing okay now let's see where we are I need to do this side the inside that looks okay and like I've said on previous videos, this is not how I would usually use this, but since uh, it's um, come unglued from the bottom, it's the way that I'm using it. And uh, so, there. Okay. And this side. I'm going to do it just a little bit heavier there. Okay, so we got that one. Now let's do this one. Just move that out of the way for a minute. So I need to figure out which side I want to be the top. I guess it'll be this way. So I'm going to come in here again to the middle and to the middle. That looks pretty good first try. 
and again fold it up just enough so that everything is square or at least square-ish for some reason that don't look right but let's do it this way aha that's what I thought I'm off a little bit right there Okay, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. I mean, I can measure and measure and measure and all that, but there's no point in going too overboard. Okay. Now let's see. The main thing I'm looking for is it to be flat across here and then meet up at the edges here. That's sort of what I'm looking for. And that will be successful for me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put the lid back on this. But I may have to poke it with a pen. Alright, next is a little inking. Now, yeah, I just think the... The music paper looks better with um, the black ink instead of the brown coffee ink or any other brown, really. Um, now, the other ones that I did, um, I submerged them in some uh, tea ink. Um, I've got a got something that's making a noise every time I move so I'm gonna I think it's my light here I have a cabinet above above this lot and uh, it's jiggling okay right. and hopefully that didn't change the light too much um, my craft room in the summer gets a lot of evening sun uh, but only through one little bitty window and only for about I bet not even an hour when we first moved here um, almost six years ago the sun was so hot on the back side here we had to put up the blinds that uh, that uh, keep the heat out um, but the trees have grown up, um, not in our yard, but our neighbors behind us, uh, to the point that it's, our whole backyard's in the shade now, almost all day long. It just gets a little mottled light, where in the summer, when we first moved here, and up until about two years ago, you couldn't stand to be out on the back side of the house. Um anywhere from about 2 onward until dark. It was just miserable. Did I do that on the wrong one? Yep, I sure did. So, so in order to film, I, I've, I've acquired a few uh, natural, sort of natural lights to, uh, to give me some good lighting. Um, so that I'm not in the dark uh, or that my videos don't come out all shadowy and everything. Um, I have come to uh, really like this art light. It was, uh, it was a little pricey for lights, but it is well worth it, absolutely. And I got the kind that comes up and then divides, so I really do like that. Okay, so I'm going to... Let's glue these. Okay, well, I don't know if my glue is going to come out or not to any satisfaction. But we'll see what happens. Um, all right, there's that one 
It already looks cute. I don't know if cute's a good word, but I think these little envelopes and tags and other things like that, they do have a certain cuteness to them when, just because they're small. I know when I was making my little journal in a tin, it went so fast compared to um, bigger journals that I've made. And I do have one that I need to finish and uh, get it uploaded so that you guys can see it. Um, that I, um, It was on one of my playlists that I retired, I think. I think I did. Um, but anyway... Um, so, right here, I'm going to punch a little hole, and here, and hopefully I didn't go keep it too high. Now, I have a drawer. This is what I've been doing most of the day. I already had a bunch of smalls. It's what I'm, let's see, in here. I made all kinds of noise, didn't I? Miscellaneous smalls. So this is a cabinet that I uh, got from my daughter. And I spent most of the day cutting up some of those 6 by 6s that I was talking about earlier. And then I had a bunch of stuff already in here. But I also have, and I collect old jars and bottles and things. So I've been making some this i've done these with paint uh just this is a metallic chocolate brown it's a paint that i got from hobby lobby and i'm just making making some um uh, uh paper clips to use and i found this at a thrift store for 50 cents or maybe an antique store i don't remember anyway it was 50 cents it's an old sample of nest tea from way back in the day, probably the 70s, at least the 80s. Um, I never drank instant tea, so um, I remember we had Tang growing up. But anyway, I got that in here with my smiles, and then this, whatever it is, Herb Ox. Uh, Herb Ox. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Um, Patton applied for um but anyway um i've been cutting me out some little uh, uh tight reinforcers so um these are out of some coffee dyed paper that's when i was layering it in the container and you can see some of it got more than others see how dark that is and then i made a few from book pages earlier the little pieces I had left over from those uh, tag envelopes I made earlier today. Okay, so so I just keep them in there because that's it's a small, but I need it contained. <laughs> okay, and I also need a big old tweezer things. And let's put some glue here. And put that there. And there. <laughs> well, obviously there's the cutouts that must have fallen out or something. I have one of those little punches that punches these out. Um, but sometimes it can be a pain in the butt if uh, if the little thing inside gets <laughs> cockeyed. Um, the phrase I grew up with. Um, uh oh. But um, what I found, if you have... Um, I want to say it's a five eight, so it could be a half. I'd have to, you know, what I can measure it, can I? I have a ruler right here. My goodness, half inch. I have a half inch punch, and then this, just a regular office hole punch, 
is exactly the same size as in the middle. So if you have one of these and a half inch hole punch, you can make these yourself. It's just a little bit more. Um, what I have found is if you punch the holes first in whatever paper you want and then take your, the little half inch punch and turn it upside down so that you can see the hole, then you can eyeball it and center it. And then you can just make some of your own. And these are really pretty to make them out of patterned scrapbook paper, especially the heavier ones. So the heavier paper are just little scraps. Um, just gives the whatever you're making a little bit extra something. Okay, I'm going to step over here to the iron and press all of this, and then we're going to fill them up and put a little decoration on them. Okay, while I was away, I went ahead and uh, tea stained the backs of uh, the papers that I picked out. So again, these are just from uh, some uh, uh, little ephemera from a, uh, this one's from a 6x6 six six, uh, that I think I got at Hobby Lobby, but I don't remember the brand. This is a Bow Bunny. Um, a piece of a uh, six by eight. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, now with the ephemera, I am going to use my little um, coffee ink. So I'm just going to go around it, hopefully without splattering stuff too much, because I added a little bit of uh, ink to this, and it's a little juicy. Um, so these two are going to be little pockets or at least a tuck on the front here or the, I guess technically it's the back, ain't it? Um, so I did not um, tea stain the, uh, them. So I guess what I'm going to do is do both of these sort of at the same time. So this one I'm going to make it a pocket. Uh, because I have a little, um, a little piece of ephemera that will fit right into it. And the key is not to get them mixed up and cross over. <laughs> so I like this one. Wouldn't you like a garden full of flowers? And the answer is an astounding yes. <laughs> uh oh. So. Looks a little crooked, but no, it's really crooked. I think I should have just left it where it was, but it is crooked. Maybe it just looks crooked because of the diagonal lines. Okay, but I'm okay. I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> um. And this is a little bitty skinny pocket for sure. And I don't know if it could classify as a pocket. But I'm going to use it as a little very, very shallow pocket. And put it right on that bottom. Like so. Okay. So I got my corner rounder and I'm using the number four because it's the smallest one I've got. I bought um, a corner rounder that I thought was smaller. It's physically smaller, but it actually punches a bigger hole than the number four. So I'm not sure what size it was supposed to be, but I thought it was a two. So I just keep my eye open for a two if I can find one. I would like to have a corner rounder that just barely did take off the tip of the corner. And I'm pretty sure um, they make them. I just uh, haven't found one as of yet. I'm almost tempted to leave that one. 
I've not left any so far, so I might as well carry on. Carry on, carry on. Okay. And here's what's going to go in that front pocket right there. And then I've got these little advertisements. It's funny. My mother keeps a lot more stuff than she ought to. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. Um, and I remember growing up that she always <clears throat> had these uh, flower catalogs because my mom and daddy, they both love flowers and they got, you know, they got a, a huge mature garden a flower garden in front of their house, a big terraced garden because they live on the side of a hill, or technically they live on the side of a mountain. But anyway, um, so when I was up there, I guess it's been a couple of years ago, I asked Mom, I said, you still got any of those old magazines? Because they had these old black and white images, you know, drawings, you know, that was the catalogs back in the um, early 80s, let's say, give or take. Well, I've got some, um, but they were all, you know, more modern, and uh, the paper was different. Um, the older magazines, the paper was, wasn't was that different than newspaper. It was a little bit more substantial, but not a lot. Ooh, I just felt some of that uh, hit me in the face. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, but she didn't have any that I could actually use and rip up, unfortunately. But, uh, they have an old farmhouse on the property that's still got, like, um, my sister and I, we shared a bedroom, uh, upstairs. It was just one big loft bedroom, and we divided it with our furniture, and so our bedrooms are just like we left it when we uh, left home. I left home in 1986 and she left in 91. And so our, so there's, if I go looking in there I might find one actually, or several. Yep, my mama, she, she, she wasn't raised during the Depression, obviously, because she wasn't born until 48, but her mother died when she was 16, and she was the oldest daughter out of 13 at that time, well, 12 living at that time. Um, she was the fourth child but the oldest girl, and so until some things got figured out with where the baby was going that was just nine days old when their mother died, um, she had three in diapers. She, her mother died on the the day she was supposed to start high school. And of course she was raised in the mountains where people were very poor uh, back in the 50s and 60s and all that. So, um, so she keeps a lot of stuff that she don't need to. And she knows it. Um, but my sister and I have just resigned ourselves to the fact that, you know, when when they both, not just one or the other, but when they both pass on, we'll just deal with whatever needs to be dealt with because it's what makes her happy right now. And she's 75, almost 76 years old. And, you know, she claims that she's sickly sometimes, but my mom is strong as an ox. Now she's not as strong as she used to be, granted. Um, but I bet she could still whoop up on me. <laughs> uh, for sure, for sure, at least in some things. Okay. I grew up, uh, in the summers we put up hay for the cattle. In the winter, we chopped wood and uh, 
carried it in on the porch so it could be used in, um, when I was young, um, up until I was 13. We lived in an old house that my great-grandmother's sister and her husband had built in 1900. And it was just a little, simple, capital T-shaped house with a living room and a bedroom on either side and then a dining room and a kitchen. There was no indoor plumbing. The house never had indoor plumbing until it, it burnt down. Somebody burned it down. Not long after we moved in 79. Um, but I, I dream about that house often. Um, but um, my mother cooked on a wood cook stove. Um, so we had wood heat in the kitchen. We had a, a, one of those big... Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's like a ceramic stove. Uh, but it was wood in the dining room. And then we had a big Franklin fireplace with a big old huge stove pipe that went out the roof in the living room. So it took a lot of wood to keep that house going. And back then, when it snowed, it, it was there to stay. It wasn't like it is now where it's, you know, it don't even get the ground white hardly. I can remember many, many times going out in the snow when I was six, seven, eight, and that sort of thing, and uh, the snow coming way up on my, up to my knees or even my thighs. But I also remember um, there was a garden space above the house where uh, Mom and Daddy planted the potatoes, and where they'd row them up was, uh, you know humpity bumpity like that but it was on the side of a hill and my mama had an old ringer washing machine on the back porch that I got my arm stuck in when I was eight years old <laughs> anyway she would give my sister and I the lid for that thing and we'd get at the top and humpity bumpity down through there we'd go almost into the state road that went right in front of our house yep we had all kinds of fun way back then. Okay, I think I've got all the inking done. So, I had two little pieces of lace that I was going to use as the ties here. So, I'm going to put those in like so. Okay, and which way does this even go this way? We'll put, let's pull it up slightly and put that one there. I think I was going to put this one like this, but I think I might. Yeah, that'll go just like that. Hot dog. Okay, we're going to put that one like that and put the bicycle let's put that in the middle I'll put that like that okay there we go that's very bland I know <laughs> but uh, it's kind of what works okay now let's do this one I would know I've got ink all over my hands. Okay, now I want that little one that says catalog, I want that to sit just like that underneath or right above this, wouldn't you like a garden full of flowers? And here's the catalog that you can order it from. Sort of. Okay. Must have had a little glue squish out and try to keep it from sticking. Okay. I guess let's pull this one up slightly. Put that like that. And that like that. Alright. 
Okay, let me clean off my desk and we can look at all of these at one go. Okay, that's quite a mess make. Um, even though it's taken me like a day and a half to do them. But, uh, but yeah, these are all cute as a button. I really like that one. I'll have to do some more this size. That Those are really cute. But um, they're kind of various sizes, but not too far from each other. Uh, like I said, I didn't measure anything. I just um, went by the edge of the print and um, either tore or cut. Um, and then squared it off and made them. Let's see if I can hold these like a like a good poker hand. Not that I know what a poker hand is, but I used to play roomy a time or two. All right, I like how those look. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in another video very soon.